Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Geoffroy Coteau, and I'm going to present implicit zero knowledge arguments and their applications to the malicious setting. This is a joint work with Fabrice Benamouda, David Poncheval, and Hute Kui. So, you all know what a cryptographic proof is uh, a prover knowing some witness which allows to verify in polynomial time that some word X does belong to some NP language L uh, is interacting with a verifier. And at the end of the interactive protocol, the verifier should be convinced of the truth of the statement, X does belong to L. So the two security properties we basically want from such a proof are its correctness and its soundness. And additionally, in the case of zero knowledge proof, we're interested in another security property, which is informally that um, the no information leaks at all on the witness held by the prover when he interacts uh, with the verifier, except from the fact that the statement is true so that the witness exists. So more formally, this is um, stated by requiring the existence of an efficient simulator, which is indistinguishable from uh, a non s prover that it emulates, but which runs without the knowledge of the witness W. Zero knowledge proof are various applications in cryptography. One of them being a secure two-party computation. So in secure two-party computation, you have two players, Alice and Bob, who are interacting to compute a known function of their joint input. So they are exchanging messages, and like um, Alice could be sending some message MA, which will belong to some NP language LA, and then Bob should answer with some message NB, which will belong to some NP language LB, and then the protocol goes on until both players learn the output of the protocol and nothing more about the input of their adversary. But it might be crucial for the security of the protocol that MA does indeed belong to LA. You can think, for example, as MA being an, an encryption of a bit, and when Bob receives a ciphertext, he cannot check whether this does indeed encrypt a bit or not, but he might be computing the next flow MB from this ciphertext, and if the ciphertext is not encrypting a bit, it might leak crucial information that should remain hidden. So to ensure uh, that the protocol will remain secure against malicious adversaries, which uh, might deviate arbitrarily from the specifications of the protocol to try to gain information that should remain hidden, the classical way is to use zero-knowledge proof. When Bob received Alice's flow, MA, he pauses the protocol and before sending his next flow, he asks for a proof of the statement MA does belong to LA. And this proof will have typically a three-move uh, three structure, like commitment, then Bob sends a challenge, and then Alice sends a response. And only when Bob checks the response, it can continue the protocol uh, without compromising the security of its input. So this incurs a blow-up in the round efficiency of the protocol, a blow-up in its interactivity by a factor of at least three, and it can be more in general protocol. But the good side of zero-knowledge proof is that they can be based on a wide variety of assumptions, and in particular, uh, widely studied assumptions, such as DDH or DLIN. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if we are looking for uh, more round efficiency, because interacti interactivity is a concern in reality, and it's a major, a major bottleneck for the time efficiency of the protocol, uh, one can settle for um, non-interactive zero-knowledge proof. So both players uh, are uh, playing in the common reference string model. And now in this model, Alice can construct a proof which consists of a single flow from the prover to the verifier, and she can append uh, this flow to her flow MA. And Bob just checks the flow and can directly send the next message, and so there is no loss in the interactivity. An en route semi honest protocol becomes an en route protocol secure against malicious adversaries. The, uh, the downside of non-interactive zero-knowledge proof is that they require stronger assumptions than um, zero, classical zero-knowledge proof. You will uh, have to work with the random oracle model, which provides only a heuristic level of security, or to use pairing-based assumption. And pairing-based assumptions uh, imply that you need to work on um, elliptic curves equipped with a pairing. And so you have um, stronger assumptions, and you might lose inefficiency, because the best elliptic curves with a pairing uh, in, in such a curve, computing an exponentiation is like three times slower 
than computing an exponentiation in the best known elliptic curve without a pairing, notwithstanding the fact that pairing themselves are very costly operations. So in this work, we are trying to get the best of both worlds by constructing, constructing a new kind of zero knowledge proof, which is called implicit zero knowledge proof, which uh, have the uh, very good uh, round efficiency of non-interactive zero knowledge proof, while requiring uh, wi only very widely studied assumption, such as the DDH assumption. And so an implicit zero knowledge proof will be a key encapsulation mechanism. So after I listen some public key IPK, Bob uh, computes some key K, and he uses this key to mask his next flow MB. And he also sends some encapsulation of the key, which is constructed from the IPK on the flow of Alice, MA. And the security property of the IZK will state that if um, MA is indeed uh, an element of LA, then Alice can recover the key K from the encapsulation. So she will be able to unmask the message MB sent by Bob, and then to continue the protocol, while if MA does not belong to LA, then we require that the encapsulation does statistically mask K, so that what Alice receives is only a completely random looking uh, tuple of elements. So the zero knowledge property is implicit in the sense that Bob does not know whether Alice tried to cheat or not, but if Alice tried to cheat, then he is sure that she will only see random elements and then she won't learn any crucial information. So our tool to build uh, those implicit zero knowledge arguments are smooth predictive hash functions. Smooth predictive hash functions were introduced under the name hash proof system by Kramer and Schubs as a tool to convert NCPA encryption schemes into NCCA encryption schemes. And as you will see, they really look like what we would like to use. Um, but we cannot use them di directly. So we have four algorithms. One of them uh, gives us a hashing key that you can think of as a secret key. And another algorithm will give us a projection key that you can see as some public key. And uh, we have two functions to compute a hash value from a word which will belong to some language L. So first function, hash, uh, takes as input the word and the hashing key. And the second function, projash, takes as input the projection key, which is sort of a public key, the word and the witness, which ensures that the word does indeed belong to L. And our security requirement is that if M does indeed belong to L, then the two hash function will uh, provide us the same result, will give the same hash value when computed on M. While uh, if um, M does not belong to L, then there is no such witness W. And it is required that the hash value computed from HK does look completely random from the viewpoint of an adversary, even an adversary who knows the projection key HP. So this looks like what we're looking for, because we could think we could use uh, the hash value as our key K to mask our flow MB. And we could use the HP, the projection key, as our encapsulation. However, um, this does not work. And to illustrate this, uh, we will uh, look at some simple example. So I mentioned earlier um, the uh, simple case that you can think of the message M as being an algamal encryption of a bit B. So the witness which ensures that M is indeed an, M, an algamal encryption of a bit is the randomness R used in the encryption and the bit B. So your hashing key will be only a tuple of random elements here. And the, the projection key is a tuple of group elements constructed from the hashing key. And you have the uh, two functions which give the hash and the projash. And if we do the math by looking at the projash value, um, in the exponent, when we compute the projash, you will have some terms related to T3 and T4 which are elements of the hashing key that do not appear in the uh, hash value, times b times b minus 1. So if b is indeed a bit, b times b minus 1 is 0. And all those terms uh, related to t3 and t4 will disappear. And then you will only be left with u to the t1 times e to the t2, which is exactly the hash value that you're trying to compute. Else, if b times b minus 1 is not 
um, a bit, which means that M is not an element of the language of encryption of bits, then you will uh, have something which is completely random, even um, if you know uh, uh, compare, compared with the hash value. So even by knowing the projection key HP, you get absolutely no information statistically on hash. However, this is not enough uh, to ensure security against malicious adversaries in a semi-honest protocol because smooth creative hash function does not have the zero knowledge properties that we want. Let's look at what happens if now the verifier, instead of sending a correctly bit projection key HP, sends correctly the first element, and then two uniformly random elements, row one and row two. Then look at the project value. Um, the two last random elements are raised to an exponent depending on B. So if the prover is being honest, and if B is zero, then the two random elements are raised to the power of zero and they just disappear, and we have exactly the same case, case than uh, in the honest example. So um, everything goes as expected in the protocol. But if B is not zero, then you have, um, when you compute the project, you have two completely random elements that makes it completely, that made the project value completely random. So you just cannot unmask the flow, you cannot recover the hash value. And the verifier could just uh, wait during the rest of the protocol to check to see whether it looks like the prover is uh, just manipulating random stuff that might be seen, it depends on the particular protocol, or if he is playing the protocol correctly. So a malicious verifier can uh, actually learn the exact value of the bit, which is part of the witness, who shall remain hidden. This uh, attack, this attack shows that um, zero knowledge pro um, smooth protective hash function are not zero knowledge. In particular, we cannot construct a simulator which could simulate all the elements of this smooth protective hash function without knowing the witness RB. But it will still be um, our base to construct implicit zero knowledge arguments. And before I describe the full construction, uh, I will give some um, algebraic framework. So uh, the algebraic framework can be seen as a restricted case on, uh, of a more general algebraic framework, which is called diverse group, which was introduced by uh, Kramer and Schupp. And uh, the, in this framework, we introduce some new operation, bullet, which you can see, in, which is the scalar product in the exponent. And the language is now defined by some mat matrix, which depends on the word M. And we extend the word on the witness to, to some tuple. And as you can see, all the elements of our smooth protective hash function can be simply computed as scalar product in the exponent between those elements. So this equips us with nice algebraic property for smooth protective hash function. And the advantage is that most, if not, if not any non, uh, every non smooth protective hash function, do indeed fit in this framework. So, and now, uh, let us take some language on which we will construct some implicit zero knowledge arguments. We have a matrix, a gamma, which defines a language. The first thing we need to do is to ensure that a simulator which does not know the witness W, which ensures that the word M does belong to the language L, uh, this simulator should be still able to simulate. So this is done by uh, transforming our first matrix into a new larger matrix which corresponds to a new language LT, which is uh, the, the language either M does belong to L, or the ICRS, G prime, H prime, U prime, E prime, which is given here, uh, is a DDH tuple. So when ICRS is not a DDH tuple, which is a normal setting, then uh, LT is exactly the same language than L. But in the trapdoor setting, where the ICRS is replaced by a DDH tuple, which is indistinguishable from the normal setting uh, under the DDH assumption. And now the matrix gamma, uh, the um, language LT is a full language. Every word fit in this language, and the witness is just R prime. So with this R prime, our simulator is now equipped with a witness uh, to uh, simulate the uh, implicit zero knowledge proof. But this still doesn't prevent the attack of a malicious verifier trying to maliciously build uh, our project, the projection key, HPT. And we will make sure that the verifier will construct it correctly, but 
We cannot use a zero knowledge proof to do so because uh, the, we will lose the root round efficiency that we are trying to get. Instead, we take the second equation, which defines HPT, and we transpose everything. And now you can see that HPT does really look like the first equation. We have some word, HPT transposed, which is equal to some matrix gamma T transpose, which defines some language, but at some witness, which is uh, HKT transposed. So with this new equation, which really looks like, uh, which does immediately fit in the framework for smooth predictive hash function, we can construct another smooth predictive hash function in the other direction. And with those two uh, interwoven smooth predictive hash functions, it seems that with a new transpose predictive key and uh, T hash and T proj hash, we could ensure that the word HP won't be maliciously constructed. However, doing so breaks the soundness of the first smooth predictive hash function. Because you can, if you look at the t project value, uh, it leaks an additional information on HKT. HK, some information leaks from HPT uh, with the second equation of the first column, but the soundness states that uh, there is no problem. Everything remains statistically hidden. But with this new equation, then um, we can be screwed. The, um, the uh, malicious proverb called try to maliciously build TPT and we have like a circular problem, and it, this would leak information in the hashing key. But we can avoid this by relying on a two universality trick. And it, with this two universality trick, the size of everything is multiplied by two. And after the prover send, sent his first flow, uh, the verifier picks a value xi uniformly at random. And the smooth predictive hash function won't be based on the word M, but on an extended, an extended word M, which is uh, an extended word M comma C times M. And so it, won't, it, isn't, it is impossible for the uh, prover to anticipate the word on which the smooth predictive hash function will be based, even though it can still send the element related to this smooth predictive hash function. So it cannot construct TPT in a malicious way uh, with overwhelming probability. So if we combine all of this together, uh, everything works, and we can prove that this allows us to reach our implicit zero-knowledge proof. So we go back to our uh, um, semi-honest protocol. Alice and Bob are interacting, and to ensure security against malicious adversaries, Alice inserts some public key, which is TPT prime, and Bob uh, mask is next flow with some key K, which is uh, constructed from the hash value HT prime and the, t pro the, uh, the transverse project value T proj T prime, uh, which means that Alice will be able to recover um, K if and only if um, MA does belong to LA and the projection key was correctly constructed and the HPT prime is our encapsulation of the key K. So to sum up, we, we've introduced a new kind of zero-knowledge argument, implicit zero-knowledge argument, which allows us to ensure security against malicious adversaries. And we have a near-optimal round efficiency. An end-round end um, protocol in the semi-honest model will be converted into an n-plus-two round protocol in the uh, sector against malicious adversaries. But we can't do so by rely, rel relying only on widely studied assumptions such as, as um, uh, in the example uh, I described, DDH, but you can think of nearly any other assumption. Thank you for your attention.